What's up everybody, my name is Brad and today I've got another book review for you and I'm going to be talking about Spun Gunyan by John Bowden. I'm going to go ahead and read the description real quick and then I'll get into my thoughts and everything on the book. Uh, Spun Gunyan, pronounced Spun Gun Yen, has two definitions. One, a dish made from rotting roadkill, usually a skunk or possum. The more fragrant or maggoty, the better. Number two, something that has been on the road for a long and unfortunate time. Uh, Deke is a broken-hearted trucker who spends half of his life on the road. All he wants is to come home to the woman he loves, but he can't have that because someone killed her. He's like a ghost, wandering through his lonely nights and days. But then he talks to Tiny, who drives the soul road, delivering lost souls. And he gives Deke a tip that leads him down that same path to the crummy diner cyclops, the sin-eating behemoth, the lovely fawn behind the counter, all in search of answers that may never come clear. Spun Gunyan is a working-class, blue-collar, bizarro horror fable of haunting loss and grief. Somewhere between Lynch and Lansdale on the mind-bending dream scale with a mythic, heartfelt poetry only John Bowden could bring. Uh, so this is the second time I've ever read anything by John Bowden. That's the first time I've ever read anything that he's written by himself. Uh, I read last year his collaboration with Chad Lutsky for Out Behind the Barn. Uh, it's a novella. It was my favorite novella I read last year. I gave it five stars. And I'll put a link to it up here in the cards for my review for that. Uh, like I said, this is the first time I've read anything that he's written by himself. And I've come to realize that John Bowden is quickly becoming one of my favorite authors. Um, I can't wait to read more of his work. I've bought a few of his other things on Kindle, uh, Walk the Darkness Down, and another collaboration with Bob Ford, I believe, called Rattlesnake Kisses. Um, so I'm really looking forward to diving into more of, of his work. Because uh, like I said, his writing is just something that speaks to me. And him as an author, he's quickly becoming one of my favorites. Uh, but with this story, we follow our main character, Deke. Um, it's spelled D-E-K-E, -E, but I did reach out to John Bowden on Twitter and ask him how to pronounce it. He did say it was pronounced Deke, uh, but we follow Deke. He's a trucker, and like it said on the description, um, his wife has been killed. I think the time this story takes place, it's been about two years or so since she passed. Um, but this story deals with some heavy themes. Uh, we're dealing with love and loss and grief, regret. And revenge and Deke himself he just he's wallowing in his own self-pity he can't get over his the death of his wife um, he's consumed with grief and, you know just eating away at his insides um, even to the point of you know the trailer that they lived in is sort of gone to trash now it's just filthy and it's disgusting and he even still sleeps on the blood-stained mattress where his wife was murdered you know, he can't even bring himself to throw out the mattress. You know, he still sleeps on it. He has a picture of her on the bed beside of him that he's rubbed. You know, he's rubbed it so much that the actual picture part is starting to fade off of it. Uh, but he's just sort of living the day-to-day, -day, just doing enough to survive. You know, he's doing his trucking runs. He comes home. He doesn't shower. He doesn't eat right. You know, there's one uh, scene in the book where he's making something to eat. And he boils spaghetti and cuts up chunks of beef jerky and throws in there and like drowns it in hot sauce and he eats that. So he's not eating well. He's not really taking care of himself. He's just possessed with this all consuming grief over the loss of his wife. And that is slowly starting to burn into this lust, this need for revenge. Um, and that's what takes us to where he meets a fellow trucker named Tiny uh, who drives what's called the soul road and from Tiny, he sort of gets this, this quest, if you will. Um, it's this list with these people and places where Deke can go seek out uh, these people who, I guess, patrol the Soul Road, if you will. And he might be able to glean some clues and some information uh, from them that will help him um, maybe figure out who did kill his wife. So like I said, his grief is sort of consumed and burns into this desire for revenge. And that's the path that he's going down. And 
He's either going to let it consume him and you know, fall through. He wants to find out who killed his wife and he wants to kill them. And he sort of maybe thinks that that will you know, help him break out of this, snap out of it, get over what happened to his wife. So we follow him on this odyssey of sorts. Um, I really love how John Bowden has uh, mixed, I believe the story takes place in Pennsylvania. He's mixed this sort of gritty, grimy East Coast um, sort of underbelly of America where maybe 40, 50 years ago, these things would have been nice, you know, these uh, semi trucks and these nice diners and things, but it's all, you know, it's all dilapidated over the years. You know, things have turned to rust and to covered in grime. And, you know, he drives the, his, you know, semi truck along these highways delivering his packages. He stops off with these greasy roadside diners interacting with sort of, you know, shady looking people. And, but he mixes, John Bowden mixes that and weaves that with this, this magical sort of fantasy world as well that we get glimpses through the veil. We get to pull back the curtain a little bit through Deke's eyes and just barely scratch the surface of what this sort of magical world is underneath all that, you know, East Coast sort of Americana. And I really like that. And it's not, you know, your typical, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, you know, Heroes of Swords fantasy. It's more sort of like a Grimm Brothers fantasy. It's dark and twisted and a little dangerous. And we just barely get a hint and glimpses of that sort of magical, fantastical world uh, in John Bowden's version of Pennsylvania. And I really love his world building. Like I said, it sort of feels like old fables and myths that he's created. And I really enjoyed that. Uh, but we follow Deke on his, on his sort of odyssey, his sort of quest. Uh, finding these uh, beings, these people, and interacting with them. And slowly he's starting to piece together these clues as to who actually killed his wife. And, you know, I don't want to give anything away, but it might be an answer he doesn't like. Um, it might be a path that he doesn't want to go down. And, you know, we get to see if he does follow through, you know, with this revenge. You know, is it going to end up consuming him? Or is he maybe going to see the light at the end of the tunnel, you know, the end to his grief and his pain and his loss, and is he going to take that way? Uh, so that's something we as a reader get to see. And I don't want to say what he chooses, but, you know, it's a great story. I really loved it. Um, John Bowden's writing, it just it drips off of the page. Um, and it you don't even really have to think about the writing. It just, the images, like I said, they fall off the page right into your mind. I do want to read a little passage here. This one just stuck out to me. I really enjoyed it. Uh, just so you can get a feel and a taste for his writing. Uh, Deke sat in the truck and gazed out at the cemetery. His pap always called them boneyards. The morning mist rose in finger curls from the crisp grasp. The leaves were starting to change on the trees and a few early suicides littered the ground. With a heavy sigh, he opened the door and hopped down. He walked four rows down and three rows over stopping under the gnarled claw of a small tree. He dropped to his knees and the cold dew soaked through the denim. He touched the stone before him, tracing the L and the U with calloused fingertips. His lips began to quiver and his eyes welled. He had put, this, he had put off this visit for months. He knelt for about 20 minutes talking to his wife. Uh, so that's just a glimpse at his writing. I really love his writing style. Like I said, for me, it just leaps off the page and I can picture, I can picture that in my mind, that boneyard, you know, the, the gnarled trees, the cemetery, the mist sort of rising up. And I can imagine it floating on the ground, sort of like a horror movie. It's just very vivid imagery that he's able to craft and create. And I really love his writing style. Uh, but that's all I really want to say about it. I don't want to give too much away. Uh, it is a novella. It's only like a hundred pages or so. And there is a short story included afterwards called The Drawler, which I really enjoyed as well. Um, it is from the perspective of another sort of minor character in the story. Uh, but again, we get that small glimpse behind the curtain of this sort of underbelly, this magical world uh, beneath our own world in the short story as well, which I really liked. Uh, but this is a, it's a haunting tale. It's bleak. And I'm, if you know my channel at all, you know I love sort of 
the bleak stories. Um, Where All Light Tends to Go was my favorite book I read last year, and that was a bleak, you know, sort of depressing, real world, gritty ending. Uh, this one is bleak as well. Like I said, it deals throughout with grief and loss and revenge, and it's just so well written and crafted. I really loved it. Uh, this was a solid five star read for me. Like I said, John Bowden is quickly becoming one of my favorite authors, and I can't wait to dive into more of his work. Uh, but this is, uh, I did get this for free. I received the ebook from John Bowden for free and for review consideration. Uh, but this does come out on January 15th. So I think today's the 13th, so it comes out on Wednesday. Uh, you should really check this out. Grab it if you can. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Like I said, sort of this haunting, bleak tale of loss. Uh, and it, but it has these sort of magical elements thrown in that I think work really well. Um, I don't know if I'd really call it a horror story. Uh, it does sort of have some horrifying elements to it, uh, but there's no like big monster or, you know, anything like that. Uh, it does have horror aspects to it though. I would call it, like it says, sort of this blue collar, weird, bizarre fantasy tale. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I loved it. It was great. Uh, but that's all I want to say about it. Uh, so again, thanks for spending your time with me. Again, my name is Brad. And I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.